we have to make sure that we are covering just the basics. We have to start there. We have to start with just the basics and work our way into more long-term storage. We have to build the basis. We have to put the foundation down. This is what is so very important. Once you have your foundation down, then what do you do? Anybody out there that went to school, then you start building your walls, right? So once you have your foundation of what you're going to prep, then you slowly start building your preps, which are your walls. It's your security. You start building those up. Do you get them to a level that you are comfortable with, that you have room to store properly so you're not wasting your money? And once you get to that plateau, then what takes place is you have to maintain the plateau. Now, obviously, at that point, you would put a roof on. But in prepping, you're never really done. A lot of people, they have working pantries. They have a stockpile of food, but they rotate all their food in there. And they use their food, so you're drawn from it. You have to replace it. You have designed your plan. You have your foundation is going. You start building on your foundation. And don't stop until you reach the point or your goal of what you wanted to accomplish. Because that's really the basis of the whole situation here is what is it you want to accomplish in your preps? Sometimes you make a plan, but until you actually have to execute that plan and put it in place, you don't know how it's going to play out. You think you may have enough of X, Y, and Z, when in fact, maybe you need more of Z than you did of Y. Because X was okay. We have to make sure that we are the ones that are basically setting up our own little FEMA camps inside of our homes. We're going to be supplying our own food, our own water, our own first aid, all the different commodities that you and your family use on a daily basis. Now, why is that? Why do we need to be doing that? When it comes down to push comes to shove, in the end, folks, you're on your own to supply for you and your family if it's a bad enough situation. Yes, you do have a lot of people that have some great communities that maybe they're a part of, close friend networks or family networks where they're all working together to um, make sure that they have all their basics covered and they can survive any different type of situation. Everybody has their own little part that they're putting into what is taking place. Ever since March of 2020, what has taken place is people, a lot of people, jumped on the prepping bandwagon because we all saw what happened. Everybody saw what happened. Some people learned from their mistakes of not being prepped and ready. And then other people that were preppers learned from what maybe they didn't have enough of or what they went through faster than what they thought. The reason we need to be bracing ourselves is because of what is coming. A lot of people are searching out for the golden answer on what they need to be doing and, you know, exactly how, when this is going to be over. We don't know those answers. There's nobody that knows these answers. It all depends on what takes place. Could we be going to war? Well, that's a possibility. Could the stock market be crashing? That could be a possibility also. The housing market's tanking. I don't want people to get complacent about Oh, well, you know, the stock market went up 12,000 or 1,200 points today. You know, we're fine. There's no need to worry. With your preps and the way that you need to be preparing 
for you and your family, you want to get it to a point to where you are comfortable. You know what you have. You can base everything off of your supplies. You know how long that you can cook and supply meals based off of your supplies that you do have in your home, which everybody should have no less than three weeks of supply of your basic necessities of food, water, first aid, and all the different products that you do use on a daily basis. Everybody should have at least a three week supply period in the conversation. Personally, you know, they're just fooling everyone and they're misinforming all the Americans that are out here. That's what FEMA stands for. Too many people are living their lives with blinders on. And over the last year, the price of food that's eaten at home, not going out to eat, not going to McDonald's or Pizza Hut or, you know, Olive Garden, Red Lobster, stuff that you buy that you're going to make in your own house has soared 13%. Well, some items are really spiking a little bit higher, which is your cereals and your bakery goods are, are spiking at 16.2% year over year. These prices aren't looking like they're going to get any better. And I'm going to tell you why here in just a second. You know, your milk and your dairy, your butter and all that different type of stuff, cheese and all that, that is up 15.9% year over year. And believe it or not, the prices of meats, poultry, eggs, and fish have had 17.4% increase year over year. And that figure is the second biggest increase behind energy. So what does that tell you, folks? Where are we going with this? I mean, what my thoughts were on if the prices are going to go down in 2023. And I don't believe so. And here's why. And this is something we all really need to pay attention to. Even the executives at all these large food manufacturing plants and corporations, and most of the analysts that analyze the food production and everything else, they have said, Next year, I'm going to quote this. Next year, the rate of food inflation is expected to be moderate. But that doesn't mean the prices are going to drop. Once prices hit, listen close, folks. Once prices hit a certain level, they tend to stay there or go up. They rarely come down. Quote, unquote. Um, another question that I did get asked, they want to know if we're headed into food shortages in 2023, which is a very, um, I mean, that's a hard thing to predict, but with the way that everything is going in this world and what is taking place, I do believe that there are going to be shortages on certain products in the coming year. And according to the WIBX, all right, now I'm going to quote these, uh, many of the common foods like eggs and dairy, flour, grains, corn, fruits, and vegetables, and any type of imported foods are going to be likely impacted by shortages in the coming year. It's a, a tough pill to swallow. I know that. You can overcome this.